you know, the world of gaming, uh, you log countless hours. In fact, you admitted to being a video game addict uh, recently here on the air, Johnny Ray. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you sought help for that yet? No, I... <laughs> had a new year's resolution to stop playing hearthstone which is a great game yeah um i i don't i'm not you've been playing it for years yeah yeah i've been playing it for um since i guess shortly after it came out of beta and wow. yeah and and i've and i've spent a little bit of money on it but usually but but it's mostly been a free-to-play experience for me uh, but i stopped playing it because i just loved it so much and i played it all the time and uh, but the result of my resolution so far is that now I play other games that aren't as good. So I want to welcome our guest, Matto Blasto, is with us from the Matto Blasto Twitch channel. Hey, Matto. Hey, Ian. How you doing? Great. It's great to have you on the program here tonight. I wanted to have you on the show because, well, you were kind of uh, part of my inspiration for going on to Twitch. Uh, in addition, <laughs> in addition to having a couple of the listeners requested on the free talk live forum uh i've been watching your twitch channel because we know each other from from real life and uh -huh. you had started doing twitch what back in october october yeah october is when i started of last year so uh, for listeners who aren't familiar your channel is mado blasto m-a-d-o-b-l-a-s-t-o-o -O. there's two o's on mm -hmm. twitch right Yes, that's correct. And you, uh, you're a libertarian. Like I would say, probably a hardcore libertarian. Would you say that's accurate? Um, you could, you could say that. <laughs> okay, because that's how that's how we know each other. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. But uh, so that's you know one thing. It's I guess you're obviously a female uh, gamer, which is yes. less uncommon these days, as I think when Johnny Ray, maybe you and I were. You know, teenagers in the 1990s. For sure. Um, oh, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can remember back then, there were just basically no female gamers. It just, <laughs> it, it just wasn't a thing. And now it seems to be more of a thing. Is that true? Like, have you seen that in your lifetime? And you're, you're what, 19 right now? Yeah, 19. Oh, I definitely see that. I definitely see that. There's definitely more, more female streamers now than there were in the past, even, uh, even just 20 years ago. Now, how many of them do you think are like legit gamers versus girls who figured out that this is a way for them to, you know, make some money because they're pretty? I'd say most of them are legit gamers. Um, definitely the ones in the spotlight are females that have figured out that you can make money from doing this. But mm -hmm. um, I think the silent majority of them are definitely real females who just enjoy gaming. How, what was your uh, story like? How did you get into gaming? What... Uh... You know, what happened when, when you were a kid? Honestly, it was my dad. Um, I remember he had a PlayStation and he would just let me and my sister play PlayStation with him until like the wee hours of the night on the weekends. And ever since then, I've just, I've just stuck with it. It's always been, uh, always been something that I've been into, been doing. And uh, I'd say once I started uh, PC gaming about two years ago is when I really really started doing it um <laughs> almost too much i'd too say too much so you, so you're like johnny um, ray you're an addict you're yes. a video game addict <laughs> i would say so yes and and you were streaming earlier today i noticed your stream was down right before the show are you streaming right oh, now oh i just i uh, i restarted it yeah so okay I'm cool right now. so we're actually doing a, like a twitch simulcast at this point yes. because <laughs> we're I, I did check i think we should be working on twitch now and you're oh, streaming yeah, you're on twitch live. So we're, so we're it's kind of like an experimental uh, radio show here tonight, Johnny Ray, where we actually <laughs> not we're not just the ones who are on Twitch. Our guest is also on Twitch at the same time, so their audience and our audience are kind of experiencing this all together. So uh, you got into video games when you were young. You really got into it in the more the more recent years. Did you ever mm -hmm. think um, at any point that you could actually make money from playing video games? Oh goodness, no, never. I never thought that. <laughs> I'd be able to monetize my uh, addiction to gaming, right. but <laughs> but here it it's, is. Uh, I know here it is. It's happened, and uh, it's really exciting. Honestly, I'm super into it. I can't. I'm just. I'm thankful that I am able to have this experience, and I'm in an in an age where people want this. Like people want to watch me they play video do. games, and other people play video games. Do they you, do. Matt Blasto? Do you play one game, or do you play more than one? I play several games. I'm what you would call on Twitch a variety streamer, so I play a variety of games. 
what are they? Oh goodness, I actually have a list. <laughs> a full list on my channel. It's a growing list. It's it's, it's a, yes, it's definitely a growing list. It grows every day. It's fairly long at this point. Um I do a lot of first person shooters, I'd say though. Um I heard you were into Hearthstone. I think that's pretty cool. There's a lot of uh, Hearthstone streamers. I've never played the game myself, but I have watched <laughs> Plenty of streamers play it. Um, the RNG is is it, it enchants me. RNG. Yeah. yeah. What is R? What is RNG? The random number generation. Mm -hmm. Hearthstone as a a card battler is yeah. is sort of has a has a reputation as being based on luck to a great amount. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I love about Hearthstone and the environment that it's in and the the magic of computers is that uh, that with with a lot of the random effects it basically gives any player in hearthstone access to every card that is in hearthstone because there are several cards that allow you to discover some random card of some certain kind so you can basically it opens up the whole collection to everyone the rng and like i said hmm. um maybe two weeks ago the it just it it's part of my addiction is not knowing what's coming next that's inherent in a card game you know right. you've always got that element of chance and then the more randomness you add to it you <laughs> there's always a chance that something can happen if you always lose you know that sometimes you'll win and if you always win you know that sometimes you'll lose but i think when you lose a lot like i do then you're really sucked in because you're just waiting for that for that win and you know it can come it sometimes does it just doesn't come for you as much as for others so madison you play a lot of action games on your channel uh you know oh, uh, yes. first person mm -hmm. shooters you were playing overwatch earlier today uh mm -hmm. you're, you're a skilled player of uh some of these games some of them the ones that you're new at you know obviously <laughs> not so much and so uh -huh. it's you know it's fun to uh to watch other people play games what do you think the attraction is this is something we were talking about the other night like why uh, I mean, do you watch other people play? And if so, what was it that brought you into the world of watching people play games? Oh, yes, for sure. I definitely do. I mean, um, what brought me in? I honestly can't remember the first time I like logged into Twitch and started watching. But as soon as I, since that day, I just haven't stopped. <laughs> Can you stick with us and talk more about Twitch stuff and what it's like being yep, a, a sure. streamer and having all these fans who are probably 99% male. Although, as you said, there are a lot more women out there these days. So maybe the, the, the ratios have shifted a bit. So I'm interested in hearing more about that. Matt Oblasto mm -hmm. is with us here. She is a Twitch live streamer. She's streaming now, and I think ours is up and running. We'll, we'll check that here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition of the program. You can take control of the airwaves here, and you can bring up anything you want. We'll be doing open phones as we normally do uh, here in a few moments, but we're actually starting out with a special guest here tonight, Ian and Johnny Ray, in the studio as it normally is. And I also do want to make sure that you know about Bitcoin.com. If you have heard about cryptocurrency, if you've heard about Bitcoin, well, then you really owe it to yourself to learn a thing or two about it. And if you're going to start on the world of cryptocurrency, and it is a deep, deep, interesting world, uh, you do want to start with Bitcoin. It was the granddaddy of all of them. I mean, this was the thing that, that uh, from which all other crypto-related things have spawned. So go to Bitcoin.com to learn about Bitcoin. It's a great place to get started. And also, if you're old school, you've been into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for a while, you'll also get uh, the latest news headlines over at news.bitcoin.com. Matt Oblasto uh, in, is with us here. She's one of the uh, the Twitch streamers at twitch.tv, which is a uh, online video game streaming platform. I guess we probably should have said that in the last segment. That's uh, where we started uh, doing live streaming as of Monday. So this show tonight... We'll complete our first week of live streaming on Twitch. And when our listeners first asked, a couple of listeners on the Free Talk Live forum first requested this, you know, my thought was, well, I mean, we're not really a video game show. This is a general interest, you know, libertarian talk show. Well, as, as I said before, we, we have discussed video games many times over the years. It's certainly not the bulk of the, of the discussion, 
But it seems like, uh, Matto, that the uh, Twitch service has kind of opened up a little bit. Like they're, they've got these different categories now that aren't really necessarily about video games. It, it used to be all about gaming, and it seems like mm-hmm. now there's some other things. Like you were doing what you called an IRL in real life stream earlier today. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. And I kind of I am really excited about how Twitch is growing in that aspect, because like you said, it you did used to, it did just used to be video games and that was it. Right. But now there's, you know, like you said, the talk show section, there's the IRL section, there's the creative section. And it's really opened it up. Like I'm seeing there's so many new people coming and starting off on Twitch every day. And it's really blowing up since they've added these new sections to it. One of the surprises, uh, we were looking at some of the statistics, I think it was last night or the night before that, uh, and one of the surprises was that there's 15 million, I think it was, per month uh, viewers on Twitch, but mm-hmm. like 2 million streamers. So the ratio yeah. of streamers to viewers is actually very, very high, it seems like. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people watch and stream uh, on Twitch, and there's a lot of content out there. And now, of course, that means that you know only so many people can watch any given stream at any time, and you know most mm-hmm. of those streamers are probably not the top you know, 10%, they're not the, you know, they're not out there pulling in huge numbers, but mm-hmm. you know, even though you're relatively new at things, you're like, what, a thousand uh, followers, something like that? Getting there. I'm at 900, yeah. a little over 900 right now, but yeah, getting there. <laughs> and you've basically been doing this part-time uh, because you up until just recently had a full-time job. And so mm-hmm. this was kind of like the thing that you did in the evenings after you got off of work. And over yep. the last mm-hmm. few months, you've managed to rack up, like you said, you know, 900 followers. And those are the people that kind of get notices when you go live so they can they can tune in and watch. And you hope, obviously, that some of them will sort of follow into becoming what they call subscribers on Twitch, where they pay Twitch five bucks a month uh, and then Twitch cuts you half of that revenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's um, something you uh, recently hit a goal on. You set a goal of hitting 50 subscribers <laughs> yesterday, and you were at like 40 something, I think, or 35. Or where, where were you when you started that goal? I think I was at around uh, 46, and okay. uh, I hit, yeah, I hit 52. Just, I mean, and. So you had six people come on board uh, subscribing to you on a monthly basis just because you set the goal and you asked for it. I mean, people are stepping up. They're supporting it. It's a system that allows people to support the content creators that they appreciate. And that's cool. Um, I think that it's it's great that, you know, Twitch has set it up that way. Uh, and that that could, in theory, allow somebody to quit a job. Like if they get enough subscribers, they could literally be paid to play video games as their full-time or part-time job. I, I just, you know, looking back at the history of gaming, the fact that that is even a possibility now is is really awesome. Maddo, I have a question for you regarding your technique. Have you had any trouble determining what the right amount of talking is? Because sometimes mm. I'll watch a streamer and they talk way too much. Um, I I like to watch the game and get a little bit um, of additional detail from the streamer, but um, but some of them talk too much. Did you ever have you ever thought about that while you're doing it, or does it just feel natural to you? I think I understand the question. The audio cut out for a minute, so oh, I didn't hear. <laughs> I think we're having some internet problems here, so I apologize about that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And- uh, relation to talking during streaming, that was honestly one of the hardest things for me to get used to when I first started off. Talking just out loud, essentially to yourself, because it's just you alone in a room, right. you know. Um, like while you're playing a game, something they usually do just sitting, being quiet, you know, you're into the game. So yeah, definitely getting started and talking while I'm video gaming and just while I'm doing just random things was it did not come naturally at all. I definitely had to learn. There are several YouTube videos up on other streamers who have, you know, kind of techniques that you can use and things that you can think about to, you know, Mm. get used to talking while you're streaming. So that really helped me a lot. Um, The Twitch community is just, it's generally very supportive. It's very opening, very welcoming, and very supportive. So they make these... You know, videos and they put them on YouTube and they're just free for you to watch, you know, getting started on Twitch and learning how to talk to yourself and learning how to, mm-hmm. you know, get that first subscriber, get those first 100 followers, get people talking in your chat, uh, being entertaining. 
And honestly, just the support from other streamers is what really helped me, what really pushed me to where I am right now. I imagine the interactions with uh, the chat is very, very important on Twitch, and that's something that you do a lot on your yes. streams. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, and it can actually be to your detriment at sometimes because you'll distract yourself <laughs> by looking at the chat when you should be like, you know, blasting Darth Vader or something like that, uh -huh. and uh, you'll end up, get, you know, uh, dying in that particular game. But, uh, but that's that's how you get, you know, those people to really care, right? Like you, you talk to them, you read oh, what they yeah, say. For sure. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, reading, responding to chat, that's kind of one of the things that I'm a really big advocate for is interaction. I like streams that are really interactive when they're with their chat. Mm -hmm. And most people come to my stream specifically for that because they say, oh, I like watching smaller streamers because, you know, the chat moves slow enough right. to where I can read the chat and I can respond and interact with my viewers. So that to me is very important. I really try to focus uh, on that as much as I can. Yeah, I, I think that is important, uh, at least for you. It, it's harder for us here, you know, because uh, we're doing a radio show and we've got callers and, you know, all these other mm -hmm. things going on. Uh, but but we have, actually, uh, especially with the new Discord that we launched at discord.lrn.fm, which you joined earlier today. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, seeing the chat going on, and it's certainly during the commercial breaks, it's easier for us to maybe peek in there and, and see what's going on and, and pluck mm -hmm. out pluck out useful things for on the air. It's, it's kind of a different experience doing a, a radio show here than doing a, a stream, which, you know, you don't have the same, like, time pressures on you. Mm -hmm. You can stream as long as, <laughs> as long as you want. In fact, last night you did... Uh, uh, or yesterday, you did a nine-hour-long stream. That is like a grueling mm -hmm. level of commitment. Wow. <laughs> Matt Blasto, can you stick with us for more? Oh, yeah. She's sure. with us here on Free Talk Live. We got more coming up. Your calls and thoughts are also welcome on the radio. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Sunday edition of the program. We are talking about the world of internet streaming. It has turned into quite a phenomenon. The video game streaming site Twitch, YouTube also launching its own uh, game streaming site. I believe that happened sometime earlier this year in order to compete with Twitch because Twitch, you know, basically owned the uh, the market share on we've got video game streaming and they got a lot of it. You know, basically you go in there, you type the game you're looking for and you can probably find, if it's a newer game, typically you can probably find somebody uh, who is streaming it live. Now, whether they are particularly good at that, you know, are they entertaining to watch? Uh, that's that's a whole other question. Uh, but we've got one of those streamers with us here. She's Matto Blasto uh, from the Matto Blasto, that's with two O's at the end, uh, channel on Twitch. And if you are already following the LRN FM channel on Twitch, then just look at the channels that LRN's following. And the only one we're following is Matto Blasto. So it's easy enough. <laughs> Uh, to uh, to find her. Thanks for uh, for coming on with me and Johnny Ray here tonight, Matto. I, I appreciate it. Oh, of course, it's a pleasure. So we were talking about just sort of the ins and outs of of like running one of these channels, Johnny. You'd ask the question about you know what is it like talking to yourself, basically, and, and at least until you get people in a chat room, which in your case happens pretty quickly. Once you start to get these uh, subscribers or followers then whenever you go live, it's Twitch sends out a notice to all of your followers who've opted mm -hmm. into that to let them know. So if they've got the app on their phone or via email, you know, the notice shows up saying LRNFM is live or Matto Blasto is live. And so they know that you're there. If they've got something, you know, if they want to watch, they can just jump right in and watch. So it doesn't usually take too long to get people into the chat room to, you know, start interacting, which, as you said, is a really important aspect of this too. You want people to feel like, they're welcome there, that they're not just spectators, that they can be involved. And one of the ways that uh, that you've been doing that that might lead to, I think, a larger conversation about some of the issues around Twitch is you've got a bot in your channel that allows people to do song requests. So this bot will play music from YouTube at the request of the people who are in the channel so they can just request, you know, whatever it is they want. You know, somebody was mm -hmm. requesting ACDC uh, t today in the channel. And so they get to hear the music that they've requested sort of behind you as you're playing uh, the games uh, that you're playing. And again, that's just that that extra level of interaction that uh, allows people to feel welcome, it seems, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, just it's little things like that, little things that you can do to 
really get people immersed in your channel and get people wanting to come back and make them feel like they matter, like they're an important part of the stream themselves, and it's not just you. And uh, and then, of course, some of them will end up feeling you know, connected enough to where they'll subscribe to the channel. In fact, somebody uh, just m mortified penguin subscribed to the LRN uh, channel just a few moments ago, and I think that might have been like the first one that we've we've ever gotten. So that's oh, uh, that's congrats. pretty cool. <laughs> well, because apparently the uh, uh, so I guess Amazon bought Twitch. I don't know if that was like yes. a year ago yeah. or when that happened, but they they bought this thing. And they tied it in with Amazon Prime, which is their free shipping program that they charge like a hundred bucks a year for, or ten bucks a month, or something like that. And uh, you know, people get the two uh, free day or two, free two day shipping. Anyway, people that have the Amazon Prime, one of their perks that they get is a free subscription that they can assign to a channel on uh, Twitch. So any of our listeners who wanted to, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, even if you're not really even a Twitch viewer regularly, you can just go in there and subscribe to Free Talk Live and then, or subscribe to LRNFM or Meadow Blaster or whatever. And then the channel that you've subscribed to will get a cut from that person's Prime you know, payments. So when, they're, when they pay for their Prime, Amazon will cut a portion of that over to, uh, to the channel. At least that's as I understand it. It hasn't happened yet. I think it, oh, yes. it yeah, actually might have just happened. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to talk about was like some of the issues around Twitch. Um, as I mentioned, there's music streaming on your channel pretty frequently. And these are, mm -hmm. I mean, almost all of them are copyright songs, right? Like by mm -hmm. major record labels and, and bands. And we got cut off the air from YouTube last week. So it was actually last mm -hmm. Sunday's show. This is kind of one of the things that spurred me going ahead and finally signing up for uh, for Twitch was they just cut our feed. And somebody told me the next day, it was actually Will Coley. He said, uh, yeah, you're not streaming on YouTube. And I'm like, what? And so I really? logged into that account. And that's when they informed me, oh, yeah, we've put a copyright strike on your account. There was some. Well, actually, they didn't say copyright strike. They said that we've disabled your account for live streaming for a month. It's because of a terms of service violation, and we're not telling you what the violation was, and we're not going to tell you when it was. So I had, I mean, I presume it was copyright because some of the shows on LRN use copyrighted music, um, mm -hmm. but they didn't tell me what it was, so I'm completely in the dark. I'm like, all right, well, screw. That's very strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so screw YouTube, um, yeah, because seriously. I knew that having from having watched your channel. When you're live, they don't cut your stream because of playing music, do they? Have they ever no, done that? This to you? is this is why this is why um, Twitch is great because Twitch, you are allowed to stream, you know, the these this music from that would otherwise be copyrighted on YouTube. But the um, sort of compensation for that is in in the VOD, like the recording of your stream, video on that demand. Gets, that gets yeah, that gets um, that gets put on a Twitch that's saved on a Twitch, they will mute that section of the video of the recording that has this, that has the copyrighted songs in it. So you are still right. allowed to stream it while you have the music playing, but in the recording of it, it will be muted. Right. Which yeah. in my, it's better. It's a lot better than just instantly putting a copyright strike on your account and not being able to stream. They just, so like I said, that's kind of the takeaway from it. Okay, good to know. Um, now, does that mean that a lot of your stuff gets blanked out later, like when they're doing the song requests, or is that just so low volume that it's hard for them to recognize it? The it's actually even songs that I thought would be muted and copyrighted in the VOD have not been, surprisingly. Hmm. But usually they're pretty good about it. Usually they do mute a lot of it. If it's if it's super quiet, like you said, it usually doesn't just because usually I'm talking over it and you can hardly hear it. And it's mostly the game audio and me talking and not really the music, but most of the time they do catch it pretty quick. So there was an issue, though, that did come up uh, with the Matto Blasto channel this week that was a surprise, or at least it was a surprise to me. Maybe it wasn't a surprise to you. Um, you did get cut off the air and you got banned for 24 hours. What happened? Yes. Well, I was streaming um, streaming during my stream, the Overwatch League eSports tournament, which um, if you know anything about video games, this was a really big step for Overwatch. They've been trying to get Overwatch into, or this was a really big step for Blizzard, I should say. Blizzard is the company that owns Overwatch. Um, they had been trying to get Overwatch into the eSports arena for a very long time, finally have done it, and Twitch, I didn't find this out until after I had got the ban, but Twitch paid 
ninety million dollars to have the streaming rights Whoa. for this tournament. They wow. paid a lot of money, and they were not happy that I was, you know, taking away from their stream. So within five minutes of me streaming this tournament on my stream, I was issued a DMCA, which is a Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Right. And my, um, you know, my Twitch account was banned for 24 hours. So I couldn't stream. I couldn't log in. I couldn't watch other streamers for 24 hours. Well, now, hold on. Now, so wait, Twitch issued that against you? Yes. It wasn't Blizzard. It was Twitch. It was Twitch. Why would they care? I mean, you're streaming it on their platform, so they're getting the that's, ad views anyway. Exactly. That's the irony of it. I, I mean, they were still Bizarre. getting the revenue for it, but they they wanted people coming to their specific Overwatch League stream. So you were restreaming <laughs> their so so you were watching the official Twitch Blizzard stream of the yes. uh, the Overwatch League. You were restreaming that through your system onto Twitch. So you were restreaming their own content back onto their own platform to be uh -huh. seen by their viewers that they would have seen anyway. Had they, I mean, that just seems so insane. It is. It's pretty bizarre. <laughs> but um, the one thing is, is that the official Overwatch League Twitch does not have a subscribe button. There's no option for you to get rid of ads. So they, if oh, people so are watching it for mine, they would not have get the ad revenue. Right, they which they want to get. get because they paid the $90 yes. million dollars to get. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Matto, hang on if you can. We'll uh, keep you here for one more segment if you have time. Oh, do you? yeah, for sure. All I right, <laughs> excellent. We're going to continue. Matto Blasto is with us here. This is Free Talk Live, live Sunday edition of the program. If you got a question, you can get on the lines at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. Just dial in toll-free here. 855-450-FREE uh, is our number. That's 855-450-3733. If you've got a question for Meadow Blasto, she is a Twitch streamer who has been with us uh, for the whole hour here so far tonight. I appreciate your time because you could be playing games. Instead, you're chatting with me and Johnny Ray, so I appreciate that. Um, if you can hear us, which is to say we've been having some technical difficulties. Yeah, there she is. Uh, if you can uh, hear us, because we've been having technical difficulties all night so far, which has just been wonderful. And my uh, chatters are reporting that it was actually happening throughout the afternoon. So apparently the Internet connection up here in the woods of New Hampshire has not been so great. So your your stream actually may be a better version of, uh, of this particular interview. But of course, the audio edition will be available later on uh, tonight via podcast. So listeners can check that out that way. Uh, Johnny Ray, did you have any other questions for uh, Matto Blasto here as a uh, somewhat successful Twitch streamer? I had one question. Yeah. I was uh, Matto Blasto. I was looking at the at the list on your Twitch page of the games the you gaming. play. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and I saw that you mm -hmm. play uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Oh yes. And that you like first person perspective games. I had mm -hmm. heard that it was a a strange community in Friday the 13th. Um, toxic, they say. Toxic. Yeah, that there were people who would... Um, well, imagine that. A game about murder, of grisly murders of uh, teenagers <laughs> would attract a strange community. <laughs> it's an, an asymmetric uh, game. This is for the listeners who don't know what Friday the 13th is. And I really mm -hmm. don't know either. I've asymmetric just seen people Asymmetric meaning playing. that uh, Jason, the character from the, the movie series, the monstrous, you know, evil character, is way more powerful than the other characters. Is that what you mean by asymmetric? Right. There's, okay. there's when you play the game, there's one person is playing Jason and everybody else is playing one of one of the counselors. Right. And if the, and it's the counselors against Jason and you work together to, to, to kill or escape. escape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've, I've heard that counselors are, are, are killing each other or trying to ruin the oh, experience yes. for, yes. for when other counselors. First, yeah, when the game first came out, it was very toxic. There was a lot of issues with team killing or TKing, which most people call it. Um, Are those called griefers, the people that go around and kill their teammates? Or no? <laughs> it's sort of slang for okay. it. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a big issue for that. And they uh, ultimately had to take it entirely out of the game unless you have a custom match when you, uh, where you invite your own you know, players to it. So in the official game release, like if you're just playing with random people, mm. 
There's no more team killing. They had to take it out of the game because of how often it was happening. Wow. Okay. And this is just, this is just, I mean, anything where there is team killing, it's usually going to be exploited. Yeah. Cause there I are mean, just people like that out there. You know, that's the anonymity of the internet. Uh, yeah. They call themselves trollers, but they're really just kind of ruining the game for other people. They're just and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're really just ass. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, like you were playing just, Overwatch, which is a, a first-person shooter, and mm -hmm. uh, it seems like does that have team killing? Because I noticed that like uh, the, that a lot of the characters, when you shoot your teammates, it actually heals them in that game. There's no team killing in Overwatch. Yeah, but, that's what I thought. Um, there, yeah, there is one character. I, I guess technically two characters now. Um, their names are Anna and Moira. They both, you know, you kind of shoot at your teammates to heal them. They're healers, yeah. but that's. Yeah, there's absolutely no team killing in that game. Johnny Ray, do you have a question about PUBG? <laughs> um, You'd mentioned that off the air. Said that looked interesting to you. Yeah, I've, I've is, only... There is team killing in PUBG. <laughs> PUBG stands for Player Underground... What Player is it? Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Player, Player uh, Unknown Battlegrounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like this massive, big, 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 big map. And like a hundred players drop into it at the very beginning of the game. I think it's based mm -hmm. on um, like an Arma style game, which is like a military realism, uh, the military, the realistic military genre. Okay. Where where it's sort of like a one shot, one kill environment, and things are realistic and not very gamey, and and but they've got this. So it's like a death match in an in an environment like that, but the playing field is restricted. Um, is sort over of, time, yeah. The yeah. the and it and it sort of herds everybody together, right? So you start out where there's almost no one around, and it's just a bunch of collecting items for a while. You might randomly run into some of the other characters, but then as the game goes on, that that play area starts to restrict, and everybody has to move into that area or else they die. Uh, and so that kind of increases the tension, I would I would guess. Yeah, I heard that. I heard somebody describe it as when it starts out, the game is like a a buddy action movie where there's two guys working together to equip to gear up, and then it moves into the middle phase, uh, where the the play area is restricted, mm -hmm. and finally at the end, it's like this. There's maybe one or two people left, and it's a and the the it, you're like fighting inside a very constrained area, and the only one tension is very yeah. different. Is that accurate, uh, Matto? Um, mostly. <laughs> usually, I mean, first starting off on PUBG, usually as soon as you drop in, <clears throat> there are people around you. And if they oh, really? get to a weapon or if they get to something first, you are dead. Like, there are quite a few matches where you, as soon as you drop into the game, like, you'll be dead. Because <laughs> someone else, you know, you'll get an assault rifle, but they're, they'll get a pump-action shotgun. And mm -hmm. then you're, you're toast because they can just... You know, one shot you and you're done. But um, that's the general idea of the game, yes. Now, you'll also frequently uh, be playing with some of your viewers. So uh, mm -hmm. I've seen that happen where they'll say, oh, I want to play you know, Overwatch with you. And then you mm -hmm. connect with them via some method of you know finding them on the Internet. And uh, you start up a game with those people. So not only do they get to watch, but they could also uh, interact with you in the game. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I am totally open to anyone joining my game with me and playing with me, you know, as long as they don't say anything that are against Twitch terms of service, <laughs> I'm totally fine with you coming on and playing with me. So viewers, you know, followers, anyone, I'll, I'll, I'm very open to playing with them. Um, anyone who wants to really just to get that extra bit of interaction with my viewers, with my chat. And that's really what I do it for is to build a community. Do you ever get tired um, of your chatters asking if they can marry you? <laughs> I think I saw that like a dozen times today from different chatters in your chat room. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you have to, you really have to just get used to it and yeah. get used to just, you know, laughing it off or, you know, making a joke about it. You can't really take it seriously. You just have to, you have to know how to deal with it. Yeah, you it just, can't, it comes with the territory, right? It definitely comes with the territory. You have to know how to deal with the viewers and commenters like that. <laughs> uh, Ian. Yes, sir. So you've got a Free Talk Live Twitch channel. Uh, it's an LRN.FM Twitch channel. So Free Talk Live airs there and Call to Freedom, our new weekday afternoon show also. You've got an LRN.FM Twitch channel. That's right. And its sole purpose is we can't, we can't play video games against each other on it? You could totally do that, Johnny Ray. 
if you've got the equipment, you've got to have like the right machine. Like you've got some pretty ballsy computers that you you built them, didn't you? Not a blast. I built. Um, I did build my gaming PC, but yeah. the PC that I stream on is just a. It's a little toaster. Mm -hmm. It's not very uh, pretty. It's not very high high tech, but um, it definitely takes the load off my gaming PC. It makes my streaming a lot smoother to have two separate PCs, one for gaming and one for streaming. I think we should play strategy games against each other, Ian, and you against and Matt Blasto, <laughs> and against Mark. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm so down for that. <laughs> that sounds like a complicated stream. How do you do it with like four people? Would you have to have four different streams in that case, or would we all be sitting in the same room? I think, I the, think the viewer would just would just pick which stream they wanted to watch. Well, even we could even do something like if we're all in a, if, uh, all in a video call together, we could just have a screen capture capturing each person's a webcam <laughs> and put it onto our stream. So even if you're just watching one stream, you can still see the other people's face as they're playing and as they're talking. <laughs> there are definitely possibilities. You know, I won't say yes. I won't say no. I don't know how much you know <laughs> more work that would take to do to uh, to set up. But you know, that's kind of one of the, the nice things about watching other people play games is I don't have to commit to a forty-hour game. I can just oh exactly. You know, I can just tune in for thirty minutes or you know twenty minutes or however much time I I have if I want to just take it easy. I can watch somebody else play it. I don't have to like actually mm -hmm. gain, gain any skills <laughs> i can watch somebody else do it <laughs> you don't well you don't have to spend the money you don't have yeah. to take the time out of your day it's like if and that's what i love about twitch it's like i if i'm not sure if i want to buy a game or not i could just go watch, watch someone it. else play it yeah. and if i think it's fun enough to play i can play it myself and you know if i think they're a funny or entertaining and interactive enough streamer i can follow them i can subscribe to them i can support them in really any way I want to. It's it's just such an open and welcoming and supportive community. I'm really finding it how, like, I awesome. love it so much here. <laughs> I hope that you can uh, hit your next goal. Day. I know you're trying to shoot for 100 uh, subscribers now. I wish you the best of luck mm -hmm. at doing that. What's the game Thank you're going to you be so playing up next here tonight when you get off the air with us now? I'm going to be playing the first Danganronpa game. Going to be continuing playing it. First day, first day playing it, starting off. So. Check her out. She's Matto Blasto with two O's at the end of that name. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk to you again about some other Twitch stuff, maybe on into the future. Thanks for coming on with us. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you. More Free Talk Live coming up.